I want to share with you some of the secrets of developing lasting connections and closeness with your child. Firstly, as parents, it's a good thing to tune into your kids to learn to really understand what's going on with them and not purely to rely on what they tell you. You can tune into your child by being with them, by observing them and learning from what their behaviour is telling you as well as what their language is um, informing you. Allow yourself to pick up cues from your children and then you can respond sensitively to these cues. We say watch, wait and wonder. Follow their lead and decide how to support them appropriately. Observe them. Watch their eyes, their tone of voice, their posture, even their muscle tone will inform you of what is going on internally. The way they move, the speed of their movements. What do you think these things are telling you within the context of what is going on around your child? When you can do this, you learn to read your child's behaviour. You will feel more confident as their parent and they will trust you because they will learn that you get it. When children are small, mostly they have difficulty regulating their emotions and they rely not only on your care but your emotional support. Try to understand your child's range of emotions more. Keep a tally for one day and explore all the issues that are expressed emotionally by your children. Take time to delight in them when they are happy, comfort them when they are sad, laugh with them whenever you can and help them to regain control of their emotions when they are unable to do this for themselves. For this we use time in. It works much better than time out. You want your children to know that when they have difficulties, when they have problems and hassles and issues, that they can come to you no matter what. If when they are little you begin to invest in time in to be with them, even if you are not holding them, when they are emotionally distressed, they will learn that they can come to you no matter what when they are older or when they are teenagers experiencing difficulty. Once you've had time in, once you have stood with them or been with them during difficult periods of emotions, once they settle down, then you can talk through the issues at hand. But your children will learn that they can depend on you, that they can trust you to be with them no matter what. Always remember to delight in them whenever you can. Even difficult moments are learning moments for you and your children. The language for children is the language of touch. Touch teaches children how they are loved, how they are nurtured and what other people think about them. You could say that touch really is the language of love for children. So touch your child often whenever it is appropriate to do so. Keep it light, keep it heartfelt and frequent and always take cues from your child that it is okay for you to touch them. Think about how many positive ways you can connect with your child through healthy physical interaction. Try tickling toes, a back rub while watching TV, a handheld while walking or a pat on the shoulder while passing by. Maybe a kiss on the top of the forehead, a stroke on the cheek or a hug, just to name a few. Children love it that you've taken time out of your busy day to be there especially for them. A touch often says more than a thousand words. Stay with your child when they are playing, when they are interested in whatever activities they are engaged in. This is often when parents walk away and decide to do something while the children are playing calmly. But when you stay with them, it gives you a chance to comment on what the children are doing. Never take control. Allow them to lead you to what fascinates them and delights them. Comment on what they're doing and let them teach you. When you ask too many questions or you give too many instructions, this may reduce the interaction, but commenting is open-ended and generally it gives a child an opportunity to shine 
and to open up and delight in you as their parent. Whenever possible, as a family, engage in language activities. Always encourage positive communication. Play with word games, sing songs and rhyming activities. Share a laugh and laugh well whenever you can. Because you want your children to know that they can always come and communicate with you, no matter what is going on in their life or no matter how old they are. Teach your children that communication is a wonderful thing in a family. As your children get older, recognise each new stage of development and the new responsibilities that come with it. Allow your children to become involved in age-appropriate expectations and involve them in daily living routines that keep the household running smoothly and help them to build life skills and independence. Demonstrate what you want them to do and then allow them the freedom to have a go. Set boundaries and discuss the standards of the expected chore, but whenever possible, allow your child the freedom to complete this without your micromanaging. It is often the micromanaging that prevents children from enjoying being a part of family chores and daily responsibilities. They feel that they can never quite match up to your standards and just the thought of becoming involved in family chores then has a negative connotation. Whenever possible, discuss openly what you want from your child in terms of the behaviour that you expect, the outcomes of the chore or the routine, and if there are rules involved, help your child to make up the rules with you so that it is easier for them to stick to what is expected. Each child in the family will most likely be different, a unique and special human being. So consider and rejoice in the uniqueness of each child. Understand the difference in their ability, their temperament, even the style of their personality. Make time to nurture each child's individual attributes each day. We live in a very diverse world and it's a good thing for children to understand that they are different but they are still wonderfully okay. It is also a good thing for them to understand that many differences occur each day in the people that they meet and in the situations that fill each 24 hours. Acknowledge their similarities and their differences and let them choose um, things that allow their difference to be upheld within the family but that do not infringe on the rights of other family members. For example, a child who has strong preferences could be a child who chooses their favourite food, the t-shirt that they like to wear best. Even perhaps an older child can choose how the furniture in their room is set out or the colour or the curtains of their room. Let them choose the music that they like to listen to in their own space and within reason the things that they like to occupy their time with. As much as possible encourage their individual friends and talk about differences often so that children can begin to understand positive and negative differences and they can also build in some protective behaviour and some risk management in understanding people around them. As your children grow older, adapt your parenting strategies with your child's strengths in mind. And always remain aware to support their particular challenges. These are probably different for each of your children. One of our children is very articulate and very computer literate. As a grown up, she's become a lawyer, but as a child of 12 years old, she developed our family. Um, holiday travel plans including all the flights all the connecting transfers and the hotel accommodation she was 12 years old and she developed a schedule which we then took to the travel agent the travel agent was so impressed that he said i'd like to employ this person who ever put this together and he was quite surprised that it was our 12 year old daughter her father and i had recognized her capability and we had given her the permission to do this for us it was a way of acknowledging her brilliance in that area. 
Even though you may give your children the freedom to blossom at the things that they are good at, you also always need to be mindful of limits and to demonstrate what is important. When you give your children um, freedom to grow, also set logical consequences. Discuss the limits with your children so that they understand the rationale behind your boundaries. Remember, you are the one in charge and you are your child's greatest role model. They will all, always follow everything that you do. So make sure that you do what you ask them to do. When talking to children about their behaviour or giving them instructions within the home, keep your instructions and your directions positive. Always state things in positive terms, like we put our bags in the cupboard, we walk inside, we sit down for eating, as opposed to stop running, don't make a mess. Make yourself a list of at least 20 positive instructions that you would use every day. Stick these up on the fridge and practice them, and you will find that when you are positive, your children respond positively as well, and life in general becomes more optimistic. This way you become aware of how to reframe the negatives with positive languages and positive experiences. Your children usually do want to please you and this makes it easier for them to do so. And then remember the value of encouragement. Encouragement is much healthier for children than praise. When you encourage a child, they learn to recognise the um, worth of whatever it is they're doing from the inside. They feel, they feel good about their accomplishments, whereas praise is an external thing and it makes children feel that they have to perform to please somebody else. So they always grow up looking for that feedback from outside of themselves. When we teach children to blossom with encouragement, they make internal decisions about their worth and they learn as they grow older that their judgment is good enough. The last thing is, if you want happy, optimistic children, if you want children that are always learning and growing and evolving, promote curiosity. Allow for exploration and expansion. Your children are learning to master the world around them, regardless of whether they are 2, 12 or 18. Always be mindful of their stage of development and their interests and be mindful of where they're stretching to. What will be the next group of challenges in their development? What will you steer them towards as they grow and evolve into the next best version of themselves? Let them grow and evolve just as they were designed to. And lastly, enjoy them. Remember that children grow up so fast. When you can embed these 12 parenting actions, you will be developing good positive relationships with your children with solid foundations of trust and it is trust that enables a deep connection between parents and children. I'm Rosie Bell from Parenting Mindworks program and I wish you well. If you would like to talk to me about some of these issues at your place, if these are some concerns that you may have or you wish to talk specifically about how to improve interaction with your children, then feel free to fill out the form below. Just put your name and your details down and I'll be happy to provide a 30-minute consultation to discuss issues at your place. Thank you. I'm Rosie Bell from Parenting Mindworks Program and I wish you well.